Some of you know me, obviously, as Amy Rose from Sonic the Hedgehog. Some of you know me as Lena Inverse from Slayers. Some of you know me from Four Kids or Crunchyroll or various other things that I've done. Uh, Winx Club, Pokemon. I do a lot of, yes, a lot of Pokemon. I am, I am currently reigning queen of Pokemon information, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I, I started on the show. I actually started in the first episode. I have been in, uh, I found this out actually from fans who told me, because I didn't keep track, but uh, I have been in every season, except for two, of Pokemon, and uh, eventually I took over and have been directing it for the past, like, eight to ten years. So yeah, so crazy, so that's what I, that's what I do in my spare time, you know. <laughs> Uh, I, I, uh, so there's plenty of stuff that I can talk about. What do you guys want to talk about? Do you guys have questions? Anything you want to know? Sure. Yeah. Uh, yes. When you voiced Lena in versus Slayers, was Slayers dubbed back in the 90s or did y'all dub that in the early 2000s? We dubbed it in the early 2000s. So I think, uh, if it was then back in the 90s, it was close to 2000 if it wasn't. So it was like, uh, look, you made me do math. Now I got to sit down. <laughs> Uh, I think it was, uh, we did it early 2000s, and we also did it, um, we may have done it like late, like maybe like 99 or 98, I'm not sure, but um, I started, so I had just started around then, so it's possible that it was like in the late 90s into the early 2000s when we started with that, but then it spanned into the early years, so um, yeah, I've been doing this for a little bit. I will say, I've been doing this for a little bit, and I am very, very happy to be here. I started when I was in school, so uh, I got, uh, I got, yeah, I, I got mono, uh, and I like to tell people, this is my, my, my origin story, it could have gone any way, but uh, I got mono and I had to drop out of school, so I had to drop out for a year, so my car also got mono. Uh, the battery was drained and wouldn't work properly. So at that time, I lived with my parents, and I would hang the keys on a hook downstairs. And so my we didn't know I needed a new car battery. And my brother, Jeremy, ha, uh, he, uh, he, uh, he stole my car. He took my car keys. I come downstairs and my car is gone. And I, and I had told him not to touch it. And I'm like, Jeremy, where? he calls. And he's like, hey. I'm like, hey, Jeremy. I'm like, where's my car? And he's like, oh, yeah, you know your car doesn't work? I'm like, yeah, that's why I told you never to touch it. And then he's like, oh, yeah, it's at George's house. And then he hung up, and I'm like, who's George? And so then the next person who called was my friend Rob, uh, who uh, is now, like, extended family. The whole family has adopted me, and we, we know each other very well. But he calls, and he's like, hey, is Jeremy there? I'm like, no, but do you know who George is? And so he did. And we went out driving, and he was, at the time, an intern for a company called Central Park Media, which was doing anime. And so uh, he's like, hey, Lise, do you know, um, you know anybody who might be interested in auditioning for this? They want us to bring some people in. And I was like, uh, me? <laughs> I was like, I would. I'm like, that's why I'm going to school. Uh, not specifically for this, but for acting and theater. And so I auditioned. And um, I booked, the first thing that I booked was a show called Record of Lotus War. Yes, which was Deedlet. And I like to say they, additional, they actually liked me for two things in there. But they were like, we have no idea who this girl is. So um, it was like that and the, and the witch. I was very happy that I got Deedlet. She's one of my favorite things ever. And, um, and it took them six months to tell me. Yeah, exactly. I, was, I thought I was done. I was like, well, okay, that's fine. But uh, So that was my very first show. And my very first professional words were... Ew, it's moldy in here. <laughs> and that's what started my career. So questions, please. <laughs> uh, what do we got? Anybody else? Any questions? Yes. Um, if I'm creating something on an indie budget and I want to be the kind of person who is trying to keep voice actors in mind, what kind of stuff should I put out there when putting out auditions? Like, or put out a call for auditions? Okay, this is a great question. Um, some of you may or may not know that I've also been a casting director for many years. I, I actually cast the uh, main series of Pokemon that I direct, so that is what I do. Yes. So, And I've cast video games and various other stuff, so that is a good thing to ask me. I would say 
whatever portion first of all if you have an image that's important to you you can put it out there you're also dealing with your first property so your property so it's what you want to share you want to have a um, you want to have a description of what the character is maybe a little bit about the world if it's relevant so that they kind of know what's going on normally people make a Bible and the Bible has like a little bit of this story and then each character has their own thing but for sides you want to have an image if you have it you want to have enough about the character that they know the personality traits and what's happening and then you for your sides I would recommend that you get at least three different um, uh, moods or acting choices for them so you can get a good sense of what they're doing when I make up sides for the show normally I will look through and I try to get um, something that note that I try to like write out their personality a little something that will tell me that and then I have three little scenes usually that I put you can have less than that but it's good if you're gonna be using them if it's your world you want to have a lot you want to have their personalities in there and um, I try to get a scene that I can tell their acting chops, if they're funny, a little bit of their humor. And then for me, because it's important, I want them to be able to scream out attacks. So that's very important for me. <laughs> and for everyone. But, but yeah, so, and if you have that information, the more like little character stuff, doesn't have to be too long, but the more you have, the more an actor can bring to the table for you. You know, that's good. Yes, you're welcome. Yes, okay. and good luck. Good luck with that. Yes. You said you've done work on Pokemon as voice acting as well as uh, directing. And yes. Um, are there ever times where there's information in the episodes and you're like, no, that's wrong? Uh, well, so here's the thing. Yes, sometimes that's it. Because we there's a whole team of people though. So I I. I have worked with the Pokemon company for many years, but they are the ones who sort of do all of that. And there are some really wonderful producers we have. Um, I work a lot with uh, a producer named Hillary and uh, another named Hoshi, and they are very on top of the story stuff. So there have been times that we'll, we work sort of collaboratively with that. So they have, their, there's a team of like 10 people who go through the scripts and everything, and they know the brand, they know everything that's going on. I've been on it long enough that I know a lot of that too. So I can, yeah, <laughs> you're like, maybe. <laughs> but so, uh, so yeah, so if something comes up and we see and we're like, hey, uh, I will always raise a question. I'm like, hey, I know we saw this previously. Um, I don't know if this was the way that we said it or is this the right thing? I will say that. Normally, they're really good about catching that, but we will always, you know, say, go back and forth and talk about those things. And there have been a couple occasions where, like, something maybe goes through and someone out in the world, one of you guys, um, is like, so that is different and then we're all like oh wow wait we didn't so that was different but uh yeah so we are we work very hard not to do that but there's a lot of people working on that and the world is so uh so complicated and complex but uh no it's great but i have i have like i have spreadsheets of things i have spreadsheets going back many years and uh and i also have what i like to think is one of the most comprehensive pokedexes ever created voiced by um the producer so yeah does that answer your question yeah it does because there was one thing back in like the uh, pokemon advanced series mm -hmm. they got wrong. No, that was which one was that? Was that one of the spring spring offs? I will tell you this. So two things. One, when the show first started, people did not know it was gonna be what it is. So it so it when it started to grow that's when they started collecting all the stuff and really putting it all together. Because you, even if you see first episodes, you'll see sometimes people pronounce things sort of differently. Sometimes there was, you know, there there was a lot of creation that was going on, and then they finally like normalized it when they realized it was going to go on forever and way past us and into, you know, I'm surprised that when we, um, what is a, uh, what is the show? 
um, what is, no, um, I was going to make a joke and now it's uh, gone. It's gone. It was going to be a Mad Max joke. I'm surprised that they're not like watching it in there. They should as they scream witness. Then one of them wears like a Pikachu. Should be. But uh, yes. But, um, but uh, yes, I will grab you in two seconds. Just hold on one second. But um, what I will say is if you ever see something like that, you can write to them or tag them or say something like that because they are listening. So if there is something that you notice, go to them and say it. We watch, we look at comments, and I know that the Pokemon company has a whole team that looks at those sort of things, and they do care uh, if something slipped through that didn't happen. But you will find that more in the earlier stuff than you will in the later stuff. So, yes. I'm, I'm kind of glad you brought up jokes. If it's not too much trouble, I was wondering, in your Andy voice, can you say in an angry way, there's no toy in my Happy Meal? There's no toy in my Happy Meal! And I'm very upset! <laughs> also, I'm very upset because I didn't know that I had a Happy Meal, and I hope it was a cheeseburger. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Cool. Uh, yes? I had it in my head, um... What was the audition for Slayers like? The Slayers audition was really cool, actually. What was really funny, um, Slayers was one of the earlier auditions that I had. And uh, like I said, I was already doing theater. I was doing stuff. I was in school. I was studying. I came in. And um, same thing as anything else. We had like a monologue. We, uh, we um, you did a monologue. You did some stuff to picture at the time. And it was really great. I walked into that room and I was like, I love this character. I did my thing and I was like, I'm never going to get that. It's too cool. And then I came back in and I did. So I was surprised by that. Um, but uh, a lot of them is just monologues and going in. Sometimes you get to see the picture. Sometimes you don't. Um, but uh, I do remember going back in there and I remember so many of those like sessions and stuff. They used to torment me. It was great. They knew they could make me laugh. So they used to leave like little jokes and things in there. And uh, Christian Freeman was the worst. Um, yeah, no, and I am working with him now because he is one of the leads in the new Pokemon. Yes, he plays Freed. And um, uh, I always tell that story. And we were like in the middle of sessions and he's like, do you remember when I used to leave you with Joe? And I was like, yes, Crispin, I do. And he was like, and I'm like, you have not changed. But yeah, he would leave with his, yeah, because they knew, and they also knew that I, like, I, I, uh, I would blush easy or like I would I would lose my train of thought if they said something so they would just like and they would wait they would play it in the background like when I was it would be because you get a take you're like beep 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 and then you talk so it would be like beep 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 Crispin says something crazy and I was like ah <laughs> and they're like, Lise, what, what's the matter? Why didn't you come in for the line on time? And I was like, this is getting nothing. It's good. It's good. But, um, but yes. Did I answer your question? I went off on a tangent. Did I? Okay, good, 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 good. Uh, other questions? Yes. So I want to say you have a very illustrious career. I've been following you since Slayers and obviously you can name me. Mm -hmm. But uh, I thought I was just pursuing more so mm -hmm. myself. I'm actually more wondering because I was also thinking I would like to direct one day. Mm -hmm. What was left the position for you to go from voiceover, like, you know, as an actress to a director? That is, a, that's an interesting question. I had done some directing for and some coaching for like um, theater stuff. But um, I will say for me, I had already been performing for a while. So, and I had been doing a lot of, an I had been doing a lot of anime. I had been doing a lot of voiceover at that point. So I feel like I was at a point that I could kind of step into that. And, um, is fun. What's nice about it is that like a lot of times when we're doing when we're doing these, we sort of are cold read. We know the characters. If you're doing a like um what's called a prelay, which is uh, an animation where you lay down the voice instead of a dub, you will have a little bit more of the script and a little more prep time and a little more things to do. Not always, but sometimes. And for this you kind of see it and then go. You see it and then you go. You know, and you're leaning on the director who's there. So to be the person who has the whole vision of the whole story and then can kind of like play and like and, and bring people to what they have to do. I mean, we're all listening to, especially when you're doing a dub, you're listening to the original language. You're listening to the Japanese. You're, you're wondering what's going on. And for the most part, most people don't speak Japanese who are doing it. Um, I will tell you this. Uh, I still 
do not speak Japanese. Well, I know certain things. No, 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 no zone, zone. But I, I was complimented on my Japanese when I was in Japan. I learned, uh, I only, because I only learned four words. I was like, um, you know, I came and I was like, konnichiwa. And then I also learned, um, oh, now I'm forgetting all my words. But I, but I learned excuse me. How to say excuse me. Yeah, which was my thing. That's what I went. So, and, but I found out that sumise is, sumise is how you say, get your check. That's how, that's what you say if you bump into someone. That's what you say if you are, you know, you're not sure what your words are. So I learned that phrase and I just said that for everything. <laughs> and I was in Okinawa and they were like, oh my goodness. Yeah. And I said that, I'm like, and they were like, oh, they're like, your Japanese is so good. And I was like, Yes, it is. <laughs> My one word from from watching things so long, um, but uh, you, what was your question? I went off on my tangent too. Just the transition. Yeah, the transition. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's been it's it's very good. It is it is a different thing. What's nice about it also is that as a performer, you learn more about. Um, you have to you have to know how to handle each person differently so some people need a lot of information some people don't some people you can tell in a certain way and part of your job is also to make that person feel um, comfortable enough to be able to do their best work and do what they have to do give them what they need uh, part of the job is also to make sure that the client doesn't go over budget uh, so that's a tight rope walk <laughs> but um a lot of times and so so it is a it is a tricky thing but i also do think that being a director for uh for me especially has made me a better actor and it's also vice versa too you know being an actor made me a better director so it but it's good i enjoy it i there are two different sides two different hats that i wear but um i love both of them so yeah, so it's good. It's you know, the first time that you go in there, you're either like, "Ah, this is great," or you're like, "Oh my gosh, I hope I'm saying the right thing." And it's it's also weird if you're if you're um, early on, if you're working with someone who's worked a lot longer than you. You know, you you may be shy about saying your feelings or your opinions, but that's that's what you're there for. You're there to for in dubbing specifically to to guide them and make sure they have what they need. You know, and like I said, well, that was my thing is I, I don't speak Japanese, but what I have become is a master of subtext. So like I can hear stuff and I'm like, or I watch a scene and I know the turn. I'm like, I'm like, oh, OK, I know where they're coming from, because sometimes people will hear it and they're like, they're loud and angry. I'm like, no, they're not <laughs> I'm like, take a listen to that. I'm like, so I so I can tell like the nuance of how people are talking to each other. Yes. Any other questions? Yes. It's interesting that you bring up Japanese. Yes. Relates to that in a way. Mm -hmm. I like to think that I'm pretty good at identifying voices just by hearing them. Mm -hmm. So when they added a new character in Smite 2016 named Izanami, yeah, Japanese hunter, I thought to myself, this sounds a lot like Amy Rose if she were a crazy cat lady. So then, like three weeks later, they released that. Oh yeah, it's Lisa Ortiz. Yeah, there you go. See, you know, as if I was a crazy cat lady. That's good. So my question for you was: Was the voice direction for that character like, okay, we want your Amy Rose character? God but bless. We want you to imagine Sonic ran to the exact opposite end of the globe, and she grew up to be a crazy cat lady. Ah, uh, you know, if only it was. There you go. It could have been. Now looking back, it should have been. That's what they should have said. But um, that was not the direction. But as long as that is what you got in the end, then it works out. I think that's the best. <laughs> that's the most amazing Izanami description that I have ever heard in my life, which is perfect. But uh, but yeah, she definitely had definitely had tones. And you can always hear like you can hear. Uh, there are definitely like uh, VAs that I hear that that people hear and they're like, oh, that sounds like you, or it sounds like it sounds like this or it sounds like you in a particular in a particular way but um i would go back and talk to uh the person who directed me and i was like you missed out i was like you should have i just got a concise definition of what is an army should be so that's good turned into a crazy cat lady i'm just picturing this in my mind now amy it's good like yeah amy is a 40 year old crazy cat lady which kind of works it kind of works Go. Uh, any other questions before I get to you? I'm going to ask someone who. Uh, I'll come back to you, but just yes, you in the back. Uh, what would you say would be a good way to be a voice actor? 
There's a couple of different ways. Um, I will say that right now there's more options than you've ever had before. There are a lot of places. One of the things that I recommend is there is a website called um, I want to be a voice actor.com that will have a lot of your information about how to get in and how to get started. Um, there is uh, there is a group called Voice Acting Club that is run by by Kira Buckland and that is a fantastic place. I'm a member of that one also. So I I sort of I'm a, I, you don't see me on there because I I'm usually busy. I'm usually running around and I'm a I'll admit this here to the cameras. I am I am a Discord lurker. You will. <laughs> I am sorry to everyone who I have, but yeah, I'm always invisible, and occasionally I turn on my little thing. But I'm usually in there, and then if I have a chance to like actually talk, I will go up because every usually if I put my if I put my thing on, then people then everyone talks to me, and then I hide. So so if I if, if you ever see me with a green light on, then I have invited you to speak to me. But if you don't see me on there, I might be on there anyway <laughs> don't worry don't worry I'll eventually I'm trying to be much more um, uh, I the past since the pandemic I sort of was pulled back on my social media so mostly if you see stuff you'll just see like me promoting like because I've been going out a lot these years but so coming from the new year I'm gonna I'm gonna be more engaged so I will maybe I will even turn my light to like the half moon so <laughs> I was like maybe I'm here yes Oh yes, there is. I will say that uh, there, there is, there was a boom. We're gonna see what happens because I know that as uh, where everybody's sort of like uh, holding their breath and seeing what happens with AI stuff. But um, there is a, there's a huge there. There you may have, you may not have as much anime because I think a lot of that stuff is being done in, um, in other countries. Like I know there's a lot in Mexico and stuff, but we do a lot of dubbed films we do a lot of films there's a lot of work a lot of animation that's going on um they are they are finally like bringing that more in but i've worked on a couple of shows and i know a couple of shows that have been done that have had entirely either spanish casts so they do the they do the do it in spanish or that one of the things that they've been doing also, if they have a lot of films that come in from Spain or come in from wherever, they'll be using a lot of times, they've been using a lot of authentic casting coming in because there's names and there's sometimes conversations that people are having. So it'll be between Spanish and English. So there is a, there is a need for that. And actually, even when I was in New York, there was a whole Spanish language base. I directed... Um, I directed some commercials that were in that were in Spanish, and um, and I think I did some, like uh, I think it was for like AA or something like that. We did some spots and ads and things like that. But there's always there's a lot of Spanish language stuff out there, so it there it is worthwhile to look into it. Um, I don't know exactly where. There's a couple of agencies I know in in California now, since I'm, in, I'm located more in California than New York, and they have whole Spanish language divisions. So yeah, don't 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 rule that out. And it's actually it's a nice thing to have in your pocket. You know, it's a very nice thing to have in your pocket. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm not sure how to put this, but um, which way do you prefer? Uh, to do your voice acting. I know there's remote to where you edit it. Mm -hmm. There's uh, where you guys are like all cast together and doing it at the same time. Mm -hmm. And then there's schedule to where you do your lines and they flee from what I know of. Yeah. What are those people prefer all It is different. Um, it is different. Most of the time when you have people who are all together in the same room, that's going to be more of like a prelay situation or um, a new animation where there's no picture that you're working to. They do, in Japan, they do do things where they're all together in a room for that they're, they're working to finished picture. But for the most part, when we do that, we're doing it individually. Uh, 
I, I have done remote work and it has been great. I prefer if I'm doing something remote that I can either see the person or they can see me because there's a lot of cues that you get from the director. You either get in like the subtext or their voice, but you would be surprised. There's a lot of stuff that I do that, I, that I'm very physical. I'm, when I'm directing, I'm standing up. I'm trying to give people energy. I'm giving them reads about, you know, like I won't give them a line read per se. I try not to do that. Um, but sometimes you have to, but I will generally give them like the energy read, you know, like I have, I have often said to people, I'm like, I'm like, if you had a battle, like, or if you're doing something, I'm like, you just came in and you were like, Hey, Hey, take this, you know, or I choose you. And I'm like, I don't need that. I need you to be like, I choose you. You know, I need you to do something else. And I need, and I'll, and I'll put your body is a big part of your acting. So, um, I prefer to be able to either see people. I do prefer to work with people in the booth if I can, like physically there. But I've also had really great sessions that I've had with people who have been remote. It is fun. I have done full reads with people, and that is really great because then you get the energy of the other people who are there. Uh, but like I said, that's more of a prelay thing, and so or like video game, and you won't necessarily see that uh, as much in the other stuff. But I, I prefer to have a human around, but I also have had great sessions remotely. So it just, it just depends. But if there's the option to see the other person, always good, always a good thing. Yes? Yes, I'm curious, how can ADB Fields never contact you to dub Lena Inverse in the OVAs and in the movies? They did. And I told them what I was doing. There was a negotiation problem of getting me out there at the time. So uh, they actually did reach out to me. What state was it in? Um, they were in Texas and I was in New York. So at the time they reached out to me um, and we were, we had different budgets, we had different things and they would have had to bring me out and pay to get me out over there and do some things because uh, I certainly wasn't in a position that I was going to be able to get on a plane myself. And uh, it just, in the negotiations that kind of fell apart at the time. But they did originally reach out to me to see if they could. Hey, I'm not trying to be rude or disrespectful, but a lot of people hated her voice in the uh, how she talks she sound like she got off the short yellow bus okay well with that i will not say i will say that i respect her and i respect her acting so i would say maybe we don't have to share that portion of that she was different and i think that that's she was doing her work she's doing what she was going to do and i do respect the work that she did and listen and yeah, people say a lot of things on the internet. Don't worry. But I would say that one, we'll just say, people, you'd be surprised what people say about me and other people too. So I'm sure at some version we've all had that. But I think I think it was, uh, I think she did, uh, she did a lovely job. She was stepping into a role that had already been defined, which is always hard for people to do. And I think she did a, she did a very good job. I do know that for a lot of people that was different. You know, it was a very different thing. So, um, but... But you know, I think she worked really hard. So that I am, I am, am thumbs up for her. And I have never, I have never had the pleasure of meeting her actually, which I would love to be able to do that at some point. Um, yes, yes, yes. No, 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 that's fine. I'm just gonna, we'll, we'll split. I, I'm sharing them out, springing them out. You're good. I listen if someone hires me I will pay if they pay me I will show up there you go that is the thing but um, I what I am able to do now which is very lovely is that I have been working on the audiobooks for the show and so I'm able to sort of go back and tell all the stories and and narrate on those so it's very good that's very good thank you very much for that and I and I and I understand where you're coming from you're like you loved that and you loved the rendition that I did and know a lot of people like that I just also I know it's always hard for people to step into other stuff I've stepped into roles that other people have done other people have stepped into roles that I do and there's multiple versions and people have their favorites and then they have their others or they have their things I mean we got two Sonics sitting at the table right now very different but we're all friends you know, and it's and everybody has their like, you were mine or you were this or this was this time. And some people are like, love all of them. So it really just depends. What was your question? question I'll get to you next. 
you next and then if you have other questions and you haven't asked any then raise your hand because i gotta you haven't asked a question i'm gonna ask his question you're next then you're next then you and then he's oh we're at time five minutes okay quick questions okay for uh for pokemon or for anything for anything uh, the strike uh, the strike was dealing with film contracts a lot first and then eventually it'll be dealing with video game projects animation and dubbing were under different contracts so we had already negotiated so we didn't get hit on that when we come up for renegotiation that's when it'll be we had just negotiated our contracts so we were still working but uh, and we were one of the few areas that were working so we had a lot of film people come in and work with us so that's good I'm gonna quick question because we've got five minutes yes yours Hi, nice to meet you too. Okay, um, I actually am a voice actor. Um, oh, very cool. I've worked with like several doctors like, uh, so far. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I just uh, released my commercial demo reel uh, yesterday. Um, Good luck. <laughs> thank you. Um, I was wondering, um, like, what do agents have to look for? So I have to apply for agents. Uh, it, it's going to be different. Agents are going to look for, they're going to listen to your reel, they're going to look at your potential, they're going to look at all the other things that you have to offer. I know that they're, they're um, right now they're also looking to have voices that they don't necessarily have on the roster, or they're looking to have more diverse people, or they're looking for a whole bunch of different things. So I would say throw a wide net and make sh and see what happens, you know, and don't be worried if you start off, and I would also say, um, you can start off, if you get cast in one of the bigger agencies, that's fine, but it's also nice to have a smaller one because that way you won't get lost and you're not gonna be competing against people that they have that are solid bookers. This is you, this is a, it's a marathon, not a sprint. So, but I wish you much luck. Very, very good. And I'm gonna get your question last and then we'll get quick, quick question. Uh, it's not good. A, tell me what the question is. Um, how was it working for poor kids with being in your rooms? I loved it, but also it was uh, it was just hard in the beginning. And working with uh, Andy Reynolds was super fun. Everybody was it was fun. I uh, I can say that, and it was uh, it was a good time. And some of my best friends, who I still talk to even now, we've been through so much. Um, the gang at Four Kids, you'll see a lot a lot more out of of us out at conventions now because a lot of them are starting to get on. Uh, yeah, they're starting to come out onto the trail. And I will say this is that. I found some really great friends that uh, last a lifetime from there. So I'm really, really happy. Yeah, Griffith, Griffith over here, I, I remember following him out to sessions because we were always booked back to back. And he always carried this big water bottle, so I would make fun of him. And yeah, and I remember one day I was like, why aren't you carrying your water bottle, Jason Griffith, walking down like the crosswalk onto the, into the thing. And then uh, the person turned around because he was this like big, poofy, curly hair. And it was Adrian Grainer. And I was like, entourage guy and I was like um see you and then I just left so uh but uh but I've stayed at his house I've been to his wedding I've seen all his kids so it's like we we uh, I say this a lot and I mean it a lot of you people a lot of you people a lot of you have say you grew up with us like you grew up watching us in anime and a lot of us because we started when we were like your age and younger, you know, like younger in our, we were just starting out, we were kids, we grew up in it. So that was our thing. So I grew up in anime. You grew up with it, I grew up in it. And so a lot of those guys are really still good friends of mine. So I'm very happy. And also like we were, you know, we were starting off, I know we're at time, we're at time, but also that's where I know a lot of the, uh, the Funimation people, a lot of that, a lot of us who started at the same time, we, um, we didn't know what we were stepping into, but um, we were very glad that we stepped into it. So, and I'm very happy to have all you guys here. Thank you guys for coming out. I am sorry that I am out of time, but you are welcome to come back to the table and there is going to be a little Sonic reunion panel later. So please do stop by. I'm gonna run to the table for a little bit. You guys are awesome. All right, guys. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody wants to talk to me, I'm going to...